Welcome back everyone. My name is Lee for Levers Kitchen today. We're going to be trying four different recipes in the Ninja Cranberry Deluxe and we'll see how they turn out. So I've got the Ninja Cranberry Deluxe as a little gift for myself because I absolutely love ice cream and I wanted to try some recipes. Now rather than doing one recipe per video and boring the crap out of you, I thought I'd do four different recipes tonight and we're going to show you how they turn out. So the first ice cream I'm going to make is with just some plain vanilla custard and just a little bit of cream to actually lighten it up. Now in this, in the actual creamy book it does say you can do eggnog which I think would turn out really good. I have actually made brandy custard ice cream before so I've gotten the brandy custard on Ridges clear in the supermarket stuff for Christmas and I'll put that into the ice cream machine that turns out absolutely amazing. So you could probably do that in there as well. So what we want to do is we want to fill up to the scoopable max fill line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up to about here with the custard and the rest with cream. And then whipped cream, I'm just going to fill it to the max fill line. And the cream is just going to add a bit of a creaminess and it's just going to lighten it up a little bit. And all we're going to do is give that a good whiskey whisk. So once you can see that is at one single color, chuck the lid on. And we're going to put that into the freezer for 24 hours. Make sure you want to put it into the freezer. It's on a flat surface, so it freezes nice and flat, or else the machine's going to have a hard time trying to actually grind it all up. So the next one we're going to make is some sorbet. So with this recipe, it's really easy. All you need is just a canned fruit of your choice from the supermarket. Now, what you need to keep in mind is it does need to have sugar in it or a light syrup, or it needs to have the juice from that fruit in there. You can't use a no sugar one because you need that sugar to actually make it work. So I thought, I was looking at all the fruit in the supermarket and I thought lychees. I haven't had lychees in ages and a lychee sorbet would sound absolutely amazing. So what we want to do is we want to fill our canister up to the fill line with the lychees. Oh, they smell amazing. It's been so long since I haven't had light cheese. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually fill this with the fruit first. And then I'm gonna use my stick blender to actually blend this up. You could obviously use your blender or some sort. And the reason why we wanna do this is the blades on the Ninja are actually sharp. They are made in a way so they actually scrape at the surface of the ice cream or sorbet to make it, but it's not capable of actually chopping. So we need to puree any fruit first before we put it into there. We'll see how we go from there. And then what I'm gonna do is fill all those gaps in. I'm gonna put the juice from this can. So this is just a syrup. Up to the fill line. And then I'm just gonna grab my stick blender. And even though I made a little bit of a mess, that's it. So all we're gonna do is gonna put our lid on and this is gonna go into the freezer for 24 hours in a flat surface and then we're gonna try and whiz it up tomorrow. So the next one I'm gonna make is a egg yolk based custard and that is called gelato. And it does require an extra step where we're gonna actually cook this custard, but I think it is gonna turn out absolutely amazing. So this, I'm just following the actual recipe in the Ninja book for now. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna get some milk and cream heating up. So for this recipe, I need a cup and a half of thick and cream. And 
we're just going to pull it into our pot. We're then going to need a cup of milk. That's just going to cut the richness a little bit. It's going to give that a good stir. Get all that cream out of there, all that goodness. And now I'm just going to get this onto the stove and just get that warming up. And with the process of making this custard, it's a little bit different in the book. I'm going to do it the way that I've always done it and I find it always turns out great. So I've got six egg yolks in this bowl here that I've already separated. And if you're from Australia, you know, eggs are like toilet paper at the moment. So they are very scarce or very expensive. The last lot of eggs I got were, I think, $8 for a dozen, which is just ridiculous. So now I'm going to add my sugar. So in the recipe, it requires corn syrup and a third a cup of sugar. Now, I'm not going to use corn syrup because one, don't have it. Secondly, I know how bad it is for you. So I'm going to use half a cup of sugar. Sugar is what actually stops the ice cream from actually crystallizing. So you need enough in there to stop it from doing that. I'm gonna add a good, maybe two teaspoons of vanilla. And now I'm just gonna give this a good whisk, get all that sugar dissolved. And then after we make our custard, I'm actually going to change things up. We're gonna make half vanilla, half chocolate. How good does that sound? So while I wait for the cream to heat up, I'm going to cut up some chocolate for our chocolate bun. I'm only going to put about 50 grams in it, not too much, or else what's going to happen is it's going to thicken and it's going to turn out like a delicious ganache, but that's what we want. There we go. And the reason why I haven't used cocoa powder is I do find when I use cocoa powder, you get that almost powdery taste with the cocoa powder. So I find chocolate being real, much more consistent. It's only about 50 grams. So it's not gonna cost you much to do. All right, so now this cream and milk has warmed to the touch. It's probably about 50 degrees now, not too hot, but we want to, what we wanna do is just temper the eggs. So I'm gonna pour about half in there. And we're just gonna stir this in. So now I'm going to pour all this into our pot now. And we're just going to let this heat through until it hits about 70 degrees or the mixture coats the back of a spoon. All right, so now we can see that this is actually thickened up a bit now. And a lot of those bubbles that were on top at the start have all disappeared now. So if we get a spoon and just dip it in there and we take it out, put our finger across it. You can see there's a line there. That means it's ready now. So for half of this, I'm gonna pour half into a separate saucepan. Just about half. And then I'm gonna add my 50 grams. That's about, it's, yeah, about a third of a cup of chocolate there. And we are just gonna stir this in until it has all dissolved. And then we can get both onto the ice bath, cool them down fully, and then we can put them into our container. All right, so that looks about done. So let's put them both onto the ice bath and get them cooling down. And then we can set our pot directly on there. And then all we're gonna do is, we're just gonna constantly give these a good old stir. All right, so now these have completely cooled down. Now we can fill up a container. So on the ice bath, this only took maybe five minutes. It's, it takes next to no time. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do two layers of ice cream in this. So what we can do is we can blend the top half or the bottom half, or we can blend the whole lot. So we can actually do multiple flavors in this. So firstly, I'm gonna pour the chocolate in, 
The chocolate is a little bit more dense, so that is going to chill down and solidify just a little bit quicker. All right, so I'm going to put this into the freezer for about 10 minutes. Just let it solidify just a little bit more and then we'll pour the vanilla on top of that. So I've just let this sit in the freezer for about 20 minutes. It's still liquidy. It's not frozen or anything, but it's going to be enough to hold the actual flavor on top. All right, so as you can see, it has mixed a little bit. And if I didn't really want it to mix in anything, I'd make sure that chocolate was completely solid. But to me, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to taste amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a lid on this and we're going to pop this into the freezer for 24 hours. Yeah. All right, so it is the next day now. So first we're going to blend up our sorbet. So this is the lychee sorbet, which was just straight out the can with the juice and everything. And we'll do this first. I think this would be fantastic on a day that was just stinking hot. So we're going to unlock it, put it in place there. And I can tell it's very glossy on top here. So I can tell there is a lot of sugar in that syrup. So it will probably, come, it should come out nice and smooth, I'm hoping. All right, I'm going to clip that in place. Power it on. I'm just going to do the full lot. And we're going to change it to sorbet, which takes four minutes. So it's going to take a little while. And I'm going to hit start. All right, so that's just finished now. So that took four minutes. It's a little bit louder. And I think that's because the blades actually have to work a bit harder for it being a solid product. Let's take a look at it. So right now you can see it's a little bit crumbly. So what I'm gonna do, it looks good though. I will say that. I'm gonna reprocess it. It actually looks really good. So I'm just gonna reprocess it full and we're gonna change it to sorbet as a respin. All right, so that's the second time there. Pull that out. There we go, lychee sorbet. So let's see, does it scoop? And then we're gonna see how it tastes. That was pretty good. So it's just a little bit crumbly and I think it just need, it probably needs some more, more sugar in it to actually keep it really consistent. But other than that, it is completely smooth and it was just canned lychees. Like how easy was that? And this is just gonna be perfect on a hot summer's day no added extras or anything like that. And usually on a hot day, you don't really feel like any dairy products or anything. The sorbet is just so smooth. And that lychee just comes set through beautifully. And we haven't changed anything to this. So I think it's really good. And in summer, it's gonna be bloody amazing. So that sorbet was just so refreshing. So now I'm gonna try our next one, which is the cartoned custard and also cream. So that's it there, it's very yellow. And then I thought, has anyone had peppermint crisps? So my grandmother used to grate this on top of a sponge and she made the most amazing sponge in, in like my lifetime. So I thought, I'm gonna chop this up and I'm gonna put that through our ice cream as a mixer. And for this one, it is a ice cream setting. So I'm gonna power it on. So I'm gonna do the full amount. So we're gonna hit full, make sure it's set to ice cream. And then we're gonna press start. All right, 
so let's check it out. And the machine did have to work a bit harder for this one, so I'm not sure if it's because the cast was that hard, but you can see it's still pretty powdery. So I'm gonna put it through a second time. All right, that was the second time. Let's take a look. It looks like ice cream to me. So I thought firstly, let's just scoop a little bit out and try it because I need to make some room for the mix in, but whoa. Look how smooth that is. And that was just custard and cream. Now, honestly, I probably would run this on the light ice cream setting because it's a bit longer. So I did hear the machine struggle a little bit, but. And I'll just say that's a really smooth, easy to make ice cream. So if you've got kids that aren't too fussy, this is a winner. So now I'm gonna put my mixing in. Most of it probably will shred the pieces, but. And then this time I'm gonna go full, and I'm gonna get a mix in. All right, peppermint ice cream, let's go. Whoa, look at that. All right, so as you can see, it didn't go right down to the bottom, but one, I probably should have put a hole in the middle there and poured them right through. So that's probably my fault, but I just made peppermint crisp ice cream. And it just has that slight scent of the peppermint, nothing over the top where it's basically perfuming your breath. And the ice cream is really smooth for just being custard. That is so good. And up next, we got the gelato, and that is the one I've been waiting for. All right, so now it's time for our next recipe, and that is the gelato. And this is the one I've been most looking forward to. So I've done half chocolate, half vanilla. So we're gonna power it on, and we're gonna put two gelato, we're gonna select full, and we're gonna set it to gelato and hit start. All right, so that's the first cycle done. And what I have noticed is from now on, I'm gonna start leaving my ice cream out in about 15 minutes before I actually blend it, just cause I do hear it actually do struggle just a little bit. So that's that now. It looks pretty good. Okay, I'm not even gonna re-spin that. That is, it does look a bit like craggle and everything, but oh my God. So let's scoop some. Look how smooth that is. And I'm gonna be so honest. So with the last one I made, it has a bit of a icy aftertaste with it. And it's not a bad thing, but this does not even have it. It's just velvety, wonderfully smooth. And it's a delicious chocolate ice cream as well. So I will be definitely making gelato for now on in the Ninja Creamy. I will be trying some different other recipes, but this recipe is a winner and I will definitely be making this one again. So for the next recipe, we're going to 
use our leftover ice cream to make a thick shake. So for our last recipe, we're gonna make a thick shake. So I have some leftover ice cream from the first time that I actually tried making ice cream in the Ninja Creamy. This is their classic vanilla ice cream recipe and it's very basic, it's very good as well. I think it's very similar to a Peter's ice cream or something like that. So it's very good, but I know I can do better. So I'm gonna turn this into something else. So I thought I'd turn this into a coffee thick shake. So you can use store-bought ice cream in this if you wanted to, but I've already got ice cream here. So what they instruct you to do is put this through the ice cream setting, and then you put it through again on the thick shake mode with the other ingredients. Really important as well, when you finish your ice cream, finish it up, make sure it's nice and flat there so then you can just re-blend it nice and easily without putting any strain on the machine. Now I'm gonna do bottom, because it's only half amount, and when it do this for ice cream, and hit start. All right, so now that's done, we can take it out. So let's pull down the lever. And you say it's made a beautiful soft ice cream again. And then I was just thinking what ingredients I could put into my thick shake and I don't have any chocolate syrup. I have this iced coffee beverage stuff and I need to get rid of it, I'm not a fan of it. So I'm actually gonna put, pour a good glob of that in the middle there. And then all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna to top this up to the fill line. Like so. put the lid back on and then we're going to insert, turn and then we're going to change this to full and we're going to change this to milkshake and we're going to hit start. All right it's finished you can see that we did have a little bit of leakage and I think that's just because my ice cream was a bit soft, so that's probably just why. I'll probably underfill it just a little bit more just to be on the safe side. And here is our milkshake. So as I said, I would probably in future underfill this just a little bit more just to play it safe. But it's a great way to use ice cream up or anything like that. Nice and thick. Let's try this out. Look how thick that is. For a coffee thick shake. That's bloody good. And there we go, four different recipes for the Ninja Creamy. And some were so easy, and some had a bit of a technique, but all of them turns out really good. And out of my picks, which would I think is the absolute best? That gelato was just amazing. And when the price of eggs drop at the moment, um, once they have dropped, I would definitely be making gelato all the time. Even though it has that extra step of cooking the custard and everything, I think it's absolutely worth it. So I'll be definitely doing some more recipe testing as well. I'm gonna be testing some ice creams with allulose, which is a sweetener that's very similar to sugar. And then I'm also gonna try a a Riffetol and Stevie Blend in the Ninja Creamy and see how that turns out. So a couple of low carb options just to see how they turn out as well. And I hope they turn out really good. Everything so far has been really good, but that gelato, oh my God, absolutely amazing. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a good old like. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.